like you said, on behalf of the people of Venezuela, of the Bolivarian Revolution, of, uh, on behalf of President Nicolás Maduro as well, we salute this conference. We wanted to participate because we feel it is uh, very important uh, that we stand up against this uh, pretext of a new Cold War. If there's one region around the world that knows uh, very well the catastrophic events, the effects of a uh, Cold War, it certainly is Latin America and, and the Caribbean. Uh, for a large part of the 20th century, we were one of the main battlefields in that war. Uh, thousands of people died, were tortured, imprisoned, disappeared as a result of Washington's Cold War uh, tactics. Meanwhile, democracy, uh, land reform, human rights, environmental rights, you name it, they were all sacrificed in the name of the Cold War. And international law was, co was constantly trampled upon. We had coups in Guatemala, Grenada, Chile, Brazil, Argentina, Dominican Republic, the bloody civil wars in Colombia, in Central America, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and, and the criminal blockade against Cuba that it, that it still exists. This is all stemming from that Cold War. So, you know, uh, we, we have to oppose uh, coming to uh, entering this uh, new uh, or a, a new environment that, that, that resembles that one. Um, you know, after the Cold War was formally over and the Washington consensus took, took over, it, it devastated with devastating economic policies uh, throughout the region deepening the divide between those uh, few that, that uh, had everything and the many that had nothing until the people started reacting to this and turning, uh, turning it a bit around. And during the last 20 years, what we've had in Latin America has been uh, you know, a struggle where uh, new governments came in, new popular democracies came in uh, with people, uh, that re leaders that resembled uh, their people and that countered this uh, U.S. corporate uh, dominance trying to find an independent way, one that opened the door for regional integration, but also very importantly for integration with other parts of the world that uh, we didn't, we weren't accustomed to. China became then a, a strategic partner for Latin America because it didn't come with that Cold War mentality. It didn't approach uh, the region, Venezuela in particular, I could, I could speak for, uh, as property or as possible colonies. It sought partners for shared development and share growth and and Washington resents this because you know honestly I think it, it can understand that there can be other sets of values around the world that don't uh, mimic their own. Uh, the United States has never looked at Latin America as a strategic partner but rather always from an imperialist and from a supremacist per perspective. In the 1800s when the struggle for independence of, of the South American nations Thomas Jefferson wrote about uh, about our countries saying those countries cannot be in the better hands, meaning the hands of colonialist Spain. Uh, my fear is that they're too feeble to hold them till our population can be sufficiently advanced to gain it from them piece by piece. So this, this idea that we are the property of the United States is it, it, entrenched in, 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 into uh, their history. And it became doctrine, it became the Monroe Doctrine. And didn't stay back in uh, in the eight, in the eighteen uh, hundreds. You know, it's still here today. And both of Trump's uh, Secretary of State, Tillerson and Pompeo, have invoked the Monroe Doctrine. Uh, so has uh, you know Bolton uh, when he was in, in in place. It's particular to say that that they wanted to uh, invoke this principle to counter Chinese presence in the region. The thing is, for us, this is really about what you know the U.S.'s uh, uh, geopolitical competition. This is an issue of self determination. We in Venezuela, as well as any other Latin American nation, we have the sovereign right to have the relations we consider are beneficial to our people. And no Cold War uh, logic should have a different say. And this is a matter of principle for us. What makes us worse is that we see this new, this new uh, Cold War building up in, in, in the middle of the huge crisis that, that the United States is having. And a lot of our, uh, our friends have spoken about this, but you know, we're, we're facing you know, this pandemic over 145,000 lives have been lost, uh, more than 40 million people have lost their jobs, and it's disproportionately affecting the poor, the racially discriminated, the homeless, the undocumented workers. And so, it's, so the United States seeks, again, to turn this into an issue with a foreign, of a foreign threat, and, and looks for China. And by the way, you know, it's not only this administration, but you see the discourse of the, of the you know, possible alternative, and they're all trying to uh, 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 exacerbate uh, this uh, this shady uh, threat. You know, we have stood up against this vision. We have stood up against the, this vision of, of Latin America as a as a property of the United States, and we're paying the price. And the, you know, the, there's a constant uh, there's a hybrid war against Venezuela with, with illegal economic sanctions, with 
the threat of military intervention with you know the attempts at diplomatic isolation, the fierce propaganda that that talks about uh, the Venezuelan democratic process, and there's no real interest in Venezuela's well-being or the people of Venezuela. Uh, you know, if there was, there wouldn't be you know a blocking of food, medicine from coming in, uh, gasoline, you know, down to to this point. You know. As, as opposed to what we have with China, where with China we have a relationship of, co of co cooperation, primarily a relationship of respect. You know, China does it's, it's been a key ally for us in, in this COVID-19 crisis. In the middle of you know this blockade, we've received you know help from the technical help. We have the teams working here in in Venezuela to to allow us to you know to to craft up our policies to to deal with this. We've had uh, uh, you know uh, uh, aid that they've offered aid just this week uh, to, with the vaccines to all of Latin America. So this is a very different concept from the Monroe Doctrine. We wish we could have a, a, a working relationship with the United States, one based on respect. But if we're going to start from the Monroe Doctrine, we're going to part from the, the, the arrogance and the aggression to think that we are their property, their their backyard is just impossible. So this is our concept, our context from Venezuela. This is why we leave. You know, uh, we have to fight this uh, new Cold War. We call all nations, we call all people, all movements to stand for peace, to stand for stability, to stand uh, for international law. We have real challenges that we must face together. When, you know, we have planets running out of resources. We have, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the poverty that's, that could still be turned around if we were, you know, uh, somehow in focus on that and not on starting a new Cold War. So from Venezuela, you know, we, we, we are in solidarity. This is our perspective, uh, and we are in solidarity uh, with all people fighting against this new Cold War, and we say no to the new Cold War against China or against any other people. We are here for peace and for uh, uh, brotherly relationships. Thank you very much.